some of the stories that people wrote when they had um, knitted their squares and during the times that they were knitting them. We're going to get them read out because I think it sounds beautiful when they're read. Yes. And some of them are very sad and some of them are just beautiful. So these two ladies here are going to do this. I'm going to sit down. Do you need the microphone? No. I, think we were... I said I didn't put on the so I tried. My name is Verity. Um, I have Mary here and Joanne. And they've all been involved in their own ways with this project. And I know that there's a lot of talk here about knitting, but actually quite a few, if not the most of them, are crocheted. But this whole project apparently started with a late night conversation between two ladies. Now, I don't know if there was any vino taken before <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that the conversation went, uh, you know, about what could they do to involve the community, what could they do to further the whole project of the Southwest uh, campaign. And then the, the chat sort of meandered into talking about their knitting classes that they had taken together and the crack that they had. And it sounded like there were two uh, naughty schoolgirls during, during this, um, these knitting classes. There was a lot of giggling when there shouldn't be, and so on. But anyway, the chat about the knitting brought about the idea of making something that would, as it were, offer a warm embrace to the staff of the Southwest, that would, um, be a hug for the hospital. Now, I don't know about the wine, but you know, <laughs> a hug for the hospital. Anyway, creativity evolved into this so-called blanket. There was a hope, and I think we still retain a hope, no, maybe an expectation, that at some point, this or part of it will be on display in the Southwest of Kew Hospital. And that the campaign to save our services will be successful. Yeah. You probably wonder what this thing is. Sorry, you're probably wondering what this is. So I'm going to talk a wee bit about this. It's kind of, it's a wee divert, but it's it means something. You'll see how it connects with this in a moment. So this piece of work is just an ordinary, simple piece of knitting. But it means a lot to me. It means a lot to me because it was the last thing that my mother had on the needles when she passed away. She was 102, so I shouldn't have been sad. She had a long, fruitful life, and with difficulties too. But she was always knitting throughout her life, and she knitted for us as children, and she knitted for grandchildren. And it was very useful, I can tell you, in the 60s and 70s to get a few jumpers handed over. But this piece of knitting was carried up at her funeral as a symbol of her life. And when it was being carried up, these words were being said by one of her grandchildren, my niece Maria. Nanny's knitting represents the great warmth and love she shared with us. The many times she had us in stitches, <laughs> the stories and the yarns she told so well. And oh, when I was thinking about what I was going to say today, because this was landed on me last night, um, I thought immediately of this, because some just in the corner there, you might see some squares that are the same wool. Just in front of the front of the side. Because yeah. 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 that was the remainder of the wool that was left over. As I say, this was still on the needles at the time. And then I finished it off. And it was special. I couldn't just throw it out or whatever. So I framed it and kept it. Oh. And summarize what we were trying to do within this project. The warmth and the love 
was there. And the crack was definitely there, and the chat, whenever a few of us got together. Now, a lot of people didn't manage to get together. They were posted in their own homes, they were knitting in their own homes. They were doing bits and pieces and, and sending in bags and bags of squares to Manic Cottage Industries, which collected them, and we're very grateful to them for doing that. But some met up, both in the Knox and in Enniskillen, and in Enniskillen, your mama was very good to allow us to use their premises. But yes, we had the crack, we had the stories, we had the yarns, and some of these stories were told then. There are many, many stories that we don't know anything about. When I was thinking about what will I say, I thought, I don't know if I use that because it's too, it's too intimate, it's too personal. Maybe that's not the thing. But then I thought again, I thought, no, it is the thing. Because a hospital is a place where so many intimacies occur. Where people are born, where people die, where people are told bad news, where people are told good news. Where relationships that might have been broken or mended, all of those things go on in a hospital. So, I've told you about the connection to the work that the wool was eventually used. That's why I got involved. I have a stash of it, loads of it, because I love to know, knit and to crochet. And um, I thought, well, this is great to use up some of it because if you're starting on those squares, you only have a tiny little circle in the middle. You can use a tiny little bit of wool for that and keep the bigger bits for out by the sides. So I wanted to use up the stash. I, my mother's stash as well as my own. I used some of that as well. And I just loved to crochet and I wanted to support the, the campaign. Um, I felt I was honouring my mother in, in creating her work and I, or, or, her will and I would know that she would entirely approve of that. And there are many, many intergenerational stories that you hear about. Now, I think at one stage we counted 1,600 plus squares. And I'm sure there's probably 200 stitches in each one. That's an awful lot of stitches. And every single one of those stitches is made by a pair of hands. And what is more intimate than touch? Every single one of those has been touched by somebody that cared enough to do it. Every single stitch is an act of love and support for the staff of the hospital. Every single stitch is an act of love and solidarity with the community of this place. And every single stitch is a demand that our community is treated with fairness. this yarn bombing. 
I am sometimes lucky to pick up second-hand wool, either free or at a good price. And I began to make it up blankets for charity. I have not done many, but every little helps. services and swag. I jumped at the chance to become involved in such a widespread project and save our much needed services. I thought of myself I had to crochet. I thought taught myself how to crochet three years ago after giving a few basic tips from my mum. Once I started I found it so hard to put down as if it was so therapeutic. My reason for starting was to make my newborn niece a gift that was handmade with, di with a difference. My love for crochet just grew from there. I really, it really helped me take my mind off my miscarriage. I was rushed to theatre for a D and C. Therefore, the crochet to help the, our acute services meant even more to me to know that we, to, may lose the services at the hospital is so important to us. With 2,000 plus squares crocheted or knitted, these pieces full of great stories, lots of love and hope. Along with my own squares, I realised many others helped with the lengthy process of helping stitch them all together, which was thoroughly enjoyable. I'm so glad I was involved. I just, I just want to say as well, um, it was a group out of both that brought in us a lot of uh, That, that brought in a lot of squares to the manufacturing industry. I don't know if there are any representatives from Bow, but they were greatly appreciated. And as I said, there were people sent from Scotland, yes. wow. yeah. from England, yes. wow. that you know weren't here at all, but were connected and wanted to do their bit. Um, a moment, please. Tina McDermott, by the way, had a fall yesterday. 
she's, she's, yeah, in need of TLC and care, and they're unable to come, so poor Bernie had to jump in with the last. And I well, tried to gather these together last night to replace Tina. And I need <laughs> Tina and Alan. There's a couple of nights that Tina supplied that I've forgotten about. Mm. A lady came into you, Mom, was one Saturday to watch us in action. And Tina had some old, very old Jonas lace with her, which was absolutely amazing. And this other lady came, that came in told us that she'd just come from Arlene Foster's husband in the hospital. And she could tell us that Arlene's mum and grandmother had made clothes lace. Mm -hmm. And I know that my grandmother and two of my great aunts crochet clothes lace. So Wow. And those pieces, as far as I remember, they were going to be superimposed on whatever bits. They're so delicate that they're putting them together at the hospital stage, but they're beautiful. Uh, and Tina has reminded us that it was mentioned before that some of the squares, we, we did ask for six by six. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them were six by six. We did four by four. And some of them were not squares. Like, there were rhombuses and kites and all sorts of shapes. And then when you went to join them together, it wasn't easy. You know, there had to be a little bit of remedial work. At one stage, I was saying, thinking about saying, for God's sake, when something quit, stop, stop calling them. Stop. <laughs> And every time I can't get them fixed as quick as she's making them burn it every not time. Not teacher, then, no, but every time we thought we'd close and we finished, right? More to come in. Come on, the industries would message and say, could somebody please come in? There's about six more bags. And at that stage, Tina's house was like an igloo. Bernie's <laughs> was, yours oh, yes. was, I think, bags, literally your floor. We were in the middle of your floors, but the squares all right. But it was the labour of love, but no one cared. Sure. I mean, a really special way. And that I think predominantly was three to four women only, which is incredible. Thank you. I'm going to be finished with the stories, and we'll let you get another bit of music. This blanket display at the Clinton Hall has been made by caring, concerned people who have felt very strongly about saving the local hospital, Southwest Acute, in Enniskill. My late husband and I lived in Enniskill for many years. And throughout that time, both of us have had different treatments there. The staff were beyond caring while still being very professional. I crocheted my squares in honour of all the people connected to SWA who wish to keep it alive and thriving for their community. My niece is heavily involved in this project and keeps me informed regularly. Plus, I'm following the SOKS page, even though I now live in England. Please, please, save this much-needed hospital. Put care and trust back into these communities. Yes. Yeah. There's a very, very moving one here. And I think we probably... Um, I'll, just, I'll just read Tina's other bit and then I'll get to you for, for that. Oh yeah, and Maggie. I forgot to mention Maggie, who, whose father had passed away about a year before, and although she had loved knitting, she just hadn't the heart to start doing that again. But she lifted her needles for to do this. And she came into the new mamas in the butter market, and she hadn't been a crocheter, but she started and learned how to crochet, and crocheted a few squares, and enjoyed it. Tina said, I have been part of SOAS since the horrific news of emergency general surgery being removed from the Southwest Acute Hospital. Myself and Helen decided in our wisdom that crocheting a blanket that we could wrap around the Southwest Acute would be a great idea. We posted on Facebook to see if we could get support from Squares. We had no idea that it would garner such support. We spent approximately eight weeks running classes and get togethers every Saturday. The morning was spent in an office in Ski with the early East of Pirate Ladies Group and the afternoon in New Mama's Full Shop in Eskimo. We received squares from all over the North of Ireland and beyond. Stitching them together was a mammoth task. My mum died a few months before this plan came into effect. She was an avid crochet and she taught me, a left-hander, to crochet right-handed when I was five. I have crocheted ever since. 
In the weeks before she died, my mum gave me all her yarn and I used it to make the squares so that she could be part of the campaign. And I know we also got wool from, uh, donated from yes. Mrs. Gay. And I think we've covered the most of it. But you might want to do that one. Okay, this is from a lady called Anna. There are a few of my squares in the SOAS blanket, one being a square of a swan. My husband Vincent. Yeah, Yes. My husband Vincent died suddenly at the beginning of lockdown. We used to watch the swans together on the lake beside our rural home. One pair of swans stayed there permanently and would hatch out five or six signets every year. I got involved with the SOAS blanket because it's all in a good cause. And just before you read, I think this is probably going to be the last one. But, you know, this was all done in about eight weeks. We could have gone on and we would have had physically enough to wrap the hospital. But it would have needed a forklift truck to move it. But, the response was huge. It, it also ties in really well with mental health week because knitting and crochet are such activities that you know they, they just calm you, they relax you. And even when I was putting these squares together, I'd have them down on the floor and I'd think, you know, does that colour go there? We should have moved that there. You know, there's a creativity even to join them together. Yeah. So it is a wonderful, wonderful activity, and even young, hip people do it. Like, what's his name? Daley? Tom Daley? Tom Daley. Yes. 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 My adventurous crocheting began in January 2018. At that time I went to the hospital with my sister, Kesha. I spent six months in the hospital with my sister. During that time I crocheted Granny Squares. Our mother, Krishna, did the same at home. Unfortunately, my sister fought with lymphoma and died in June 2018 after a bone marrow transplant. My mother suffered from breast cancer and after the disease recovered, the treatment began to bring good results. Unfortunately, on the 1st of November 2021, she had COVID-19. On the 4th of November, ambulance took her to the hospital, and after three days, she was no longer with us. The last words I heard from my mother on the phone was, Monika, it's over. After my mother's funeral, my father gave me a large bag of crochet squares. The squares were small, so I decided to enlarge them. In August 2023, I see information on Facebook about big projects with granny squares. My mother and me made our small contribution to saving the hospital. And that's just some of the stories that we know of. It's such a lovely yeah. talk, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The thing you Tony know. has beside her. And no, 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 not there's a layer. Yes, yes. But just during the week, as far as I'm aware, the, the ladies' stories are going to be enlarged. Yes, they do. They, they do going to remain visible. I think. Yeah, the stories enlarged and all of them. Going to put these put up on the wall so that people can read them when they come in because I think they're very important. Yes, yes. it's inconsistent. And then sing another bit of that. I'm Keith Fitner, I'm the director of Ishka and I, I that runs the, both the Clinton Centre here and the Intech Centre. And I, I just want to take a second to first of all welcome you very much to here. Um, and I'm listening to your, your, your talks and this whole thing is, is incredibly significant. Um, one thing that struck me, I got an estimate of about 2,000 squares now with 200 stitches per square, which is 400,000 stitches. And the swap sees over 100,000 people a year. So rather than think of this as 2,000 uh, squares, think of it as 400,000 people, which is yeah. a few yeah. years of patients. Yeah. Yeah. And so you represent an immense number of people. 
an immense number of people in this area. And one thing about Ishka is Ishka is open to all people from all backgrounds. It doesn't matter what your politics or your religion or your social background is. This place is for everybody. And you know, when you're in hospital, uh, it doesn't matter what your religion is, what your politics is, yes. or where you come from. So you're expressing and you're embodying what Ishka stands for. And so you're very, very welcome. And I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When we finish the singing and we have coffee down the corridor.